Welcome to The Fix List, a guide to improving your paintings by looking at other work in search of common visual problems. And today's problem is color. And there's a lot of different things we could talk about here, but I want to limit it to color, improving the clarity of your composition, and not distracting from the story you're trying to tell. So let's look at a few examples from the Control Paint community. I want to start out with this one because it is a cartoony style of rendering, which is very flat colors and flat shadows. So the changes we make will be very obvious. The problem I see in this one is that the color is creating a bit of clutter. Even though the character has a very strong silhouette and a very clear design, the difference between the color of the background and the color of the tail especially is not enough. If you kind of squint at this, the shape of the tail gets lost a little bit in the background. I'd say overall, it's just a bit confusing when you look at it and it really could be improved just with color. I'm actually gonna turn on a desaturation layer set to the color blending mode so we can look at this in black and white. Black and white, it turns out, is a great way to learn about your color. Because when we see this in black and white, it becomes very obvious how contrast is a bit of an issue. So in my paint over, the goal was to change the color such that the values read more clearly. I know it seems like a bit of a contradiction. I'm gonna keep it in black and white and then show you my paint over and see how much more clear the silhouette is. Her character's colors are generally dark and light and no middle tones. So I decided to make the background essentially a middle tone such that both the light areas and the dark areas would stand out on top of it. All told, the character's silhouette becomes much more clear and the background becomes less distracting. So let's look at it in color. Here is my version and here's the original. So you can see, I've definitely simplified the background, but I haven't really changed the character much at all. I've darkened down the values in the tail in order to make it stand out more against the background, but really that's about it. So this is a great lesson that color is all about relativity because the background is less saturated, her colors pop more. They become more visible and she becomes prominent due to the relative colors that surround her. You can see I've desaturated the grass and these little tentacles that are grabbing her, and all that was intentional. So once again, here is before. You can see everything is about equally saturated, and the values are not helping to make the shapes read clearly. And then here is after, where I've toned down the background and been very careful to try and make the values read clearly. It's amazing how much value matters when we're talking about color. This is another classic example because black is a dangerous thing, especially when we're talking about soft organic things like a flower or a jungle background. In anything other than the most harsh of lighting conditions, you almost never see darks that are this black. So with my paint over, I've decided to make it much more mid-tone. Here, the softness of the materials and the translucency of some of these petals becomes much more realistic. Now, had I started from scratch, I probably would have made a few choices differently. But you can tell that in the before and in the after, this one feels much more like a real flower. It feels more delicate. And a lot of that comes down to just the amount of contrast used. It's very easy to accidentally put too much contrast in your work. And I hope this example shows that lower contrast is sometimes a better way to go. I chose that rose and also this next one in part because red is a really hard color to do. It's so punchy and visible, it tends to really flatten images. And when I look at this image, the problem I see is general flatness. It's all equal saturation red, and as a result, it doesn't really give a lot of dimensional quality. So in my paint over, what I decided to do was to give it a much stronger light direction. I also decided to have the shadows be much less saturated. So we have very saturated highlights, deep red color, and then almost gray in the shadows. Now to you, it might even look like a cool color, almost maybe blue, when in reality, it's just gray next to very saturated red. And because of the way our eyes work, it will look like a cool color, even if it's a totally neutral gray. And finally, I did add a rim light that is a much higher value. And the reason I did that is because red is actually a pretty low value. Here, this extremely bright red is still only 70% luminosity. 
So I just wanted to have something that was a very high value in the image just to set the character apart from the background, which is going to be dark. Now this is definitely not a requirement. The only way to paint red skin does not include a very strong rim light, but I think it helps break up from the monotonous solid red of the original. Again, we see here before it was very same, same. Everywhere in the image was the same type of red. I've made some choices that broke up that red a bit, allowing the saturated areas to really stand out because they're surrounded by other colors. And this idea of monotonous color is something that I see all the time in beginner work. Here's another example of brown everywhere, just like the red of the previous image. So when I want to improve this, my goal was to have more variety in the color and also to use color in such a way as to give a little more form to this image. It's reading a little flat right now. So once again, I'm going to turn on my black and white layer so we can see what we're working with. And my paint over looks like this. So we can see before and after. Even just in black and white, it's got much more sense of value difference, of three-dimensional lighting, and clear shape read. So we'll turn it into color mode. And here you can see that I've gone from pure brown to a much more analogous color palette. Here we've got oranges and yellows and greens. Everything's got that same brownish, orangish cast that I got from the original image, but there's just more variety. So sometimes adding a little bit of variety to your color palette can go a long way. This image might not really have any blues or purples, but just adding a little bit of variety can add a lot of life to a largely monochromatic image before and after. So let's finish off with one of my paintings. This here is a great example of one of my personal issues, which is I came from grayscale painting. It was actually a while until I adopted color. So as a result, a lot of my color paintings take on a monochrome quality to their detriment. This bug guy is essentially one local color. There's a lot of lighting on top and there's a lot of atmosphere color but he essentially looks like he is a toy that is some molded orange plastic. Well, if you look at any real object, specifically something like a bug, they have lots of interesting local colors. So my paint over here has changed just the local color. So we have some red on the mandibles here. The eyes are more green. I've put some patterning on his skin. There's a sort of a belly color that's separate from the rest. All told, when we look at the before, it's a pretty flat character. Really the only variety is coming from the lighting. And then after, there's much more interesting stuff happening just in terms of his local color. And this is not a problem everyone encounters because I'm always thinking about lighting. So sometimes I'll do myself a disservice with local color. And I wanna thank the brave audience members that sent in their art to help with this project. It's not easy to get your work critiqued, so thanks for the help. See you in the next video.